One, two, three. Okay, you pull it off. There might be a little adhesive. Boom, and it's on like that. So I'd be lying to you if I told you it didn't hurt. It does hurt a little bit, not at first, it's afterwards because there's this little micro sensor in your arm. All right, uh-oh. It's not allowed me to search for a Libre Pro, only just the Libre. What's up my friend, in this video we're gonna talk about all things continuous glucose monitor testing, top insights, how to get one, and lessons I've learned from interviewing people that have taught me a lot about this, like Yaron Haddad and Tab Furchaw. I'll put links uh, to those interviews right there. Uh, and also I wore it back in 2017, got a different one and wore this for the better part of the summer. And also in this video, uh, actually I'm gonna share this in another video, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it in this video. Uh, my wife and I went to a vegan restaurant. And we often hear that plant-based foods are always healthy. <laughs> They're better than meat-based foods. But I brought my little continuous glucose monitor along when I had the probe in. We tested my glucose before, during, and after the meal. And the results would suggest that not always are vegan foods healthy. But let's talk about the top insights and then we'll talk about how to get a continuous glucose monitor a little bit later. So first things first, there's a lot of non-nutritional factors that I found that personally affected my blood glucose, particularly stress, and that was perceived stress. The type of stress in which I felt like I had no control. This was at an airport in Toronto, it was April of 2017. I'll put a screenshot to a video I, or a picture that I shared on social media, Facebook and, and Instagram and so forth. My blood glucose shot up to a crazy level. It was close to 200 milligrams per DL. And I found that to be pretty surprising because what I found with wearing this continuous glucose monitor back in 2017 is my blood sugar swings were very, much tighter, particularly since I've been keto since 2015 and since I was fasted, okay? So I hadn't had any food for over 15 hours, but still the counter regulatory hormones, cortisol, adrenaline, noradrenaline were strong enough to cause gluconeogenesis and, and liberating uh, synthesis of glucose from Manu to cause my blood sugar to spike that aberrantly. That was crazy. Um, so keep that in mind, right? Do you have a lot of stress in your life where there's feelings of lack of control? So I was going through an airport, there was a big security line, I thought I was gonna miss my flight, I was doing a speaking engagement that night, like I had to be there, there was no other flight options. And the security line was like, was, I think it was around spring break time, you know, it was like middle of uh, April in Toronto, and my TSA pre didn't work, nothing worked. So I was just stuck in line and I almost missed my flight. So big, number, big thing number one, stress has a huge impact on your blood sugar homeostasis and probably fat burning, although I didn't like gain weight from that experience. If I were to have had all that perceived stress for a long period of time, I probably would have gained weight. Number two, uh, sleep. So sleep tends to have to push, as Yaron Haddad talked about in a video we did. Uh, my partner uh, one night uh, pulled an all-nighter. We worked really hard. And the following day, we saw all of his glucose responses being amplified significantly. Okay, I'm talking about uh, at least 50% above the normal uh, delta that he, that he had. And then the next night, he actually got a good night's sleep and, uh, and you saw the glucose responses going back to what they typically are. Sleep, I found sleep loss, sleep changes, traveling and all that tended to push everything up. So my fasting glucose would, instead of be like 75, might be 85 or 90 first thing in the morning. So post-meal glucose rises were much more amplified as well. Whereas exercise and fasting pushed everything down, meaning that my fasting levels were lower and my post-meal levels were lower as well. They still rise in the post-meal, but just not as much. Now, the third lesson that I found was that different supplements and herbs and botanicals and fasting tended to have a huge impact on uh, blood sugar homeostasis, particularly berberine hydrochloride, myo-inositol, and essential fatty acids. So I found that those nutrients, when I would uh, tinker and test with those, they really had a, a compressing effect on my blood sugar. So I thought that was really interesting. I was able to actually exercise taking all these different supplements, my glucose was around 55, which most doctors would say, you're hypoglycemic, have a banana or some Skittles, right? Um, but I was able to work out because my ketone levels were high, they were like three millimolar. Uh, so again, you know, there's kind of the inverse relationship. What I found though that was interesting is my blood sugar levels never got below 50. So they, they always kind of hung in there. And that, that was just the one time they got that low. That was a combination of exercise, fasting, and taking those supplements. So. I don't suggest getting your blood glucose that low. To be honest, I did do a shoulder workout 
but it wasn't the best. <laughs> uh, you're gonna feel a lot better if your blood sugar levels are, are you know, more normal-ish in the 70s and 80s, and then ketone levels are moderate. That's just what I found. So those are kind of the top four lessons. Again, stress, sleep, um, the macronutrients in the food, uh, and then obviously the supplements play a huge role. And, and the, the four, sorry, Am I on four or five? I can't remember. Um, the last thing I want to mention is that exercise after a meal really precipitously dropped my blood sugar. So just going for a brisk walk with the dogs, I'm talking seven, eight minutes. It doesn't have to be a 35 minute hike. Just a brisk walk around our neighborhood with the dogs, let them go pee and do their sniff bushes and whatever dogs do. That could have a swing in my blood glucose, um, particularly after I had a vegan meal. Uh, 50 points. One final comment. I know I shouldn't be making these videos at nine o'clock at night, but my glucose is rising standing here, which is crazy. It has never been over 140 outside of exercise or sauna. So what do you do? You go and take a walk because exercise has the ability to uptake glucose independent of insulin. Okay guys, um, so just went for a walk. Can you see that now? All right, went for a walk with the dogs. My glucose got as high as 140. That was the biggest swing I've ever noticed. Uh, I mean, I don't eat a lot of processed carbohydrates or carbohydrates in general, but I did, and I'll share with you in another, another video, go out to a vegetarian restaurant. I said, give me your most popular items on the menu. My glucose had a huge swing, and walking afterwards uh, really brought things back into a more normal range. Okay, so those are the insights that I learned. Obviously, you know, you didn't hear me mention macronutrients, calories, or anything like that. I don't track my macros. I don't track my fat or protein or carbs. I've been low carb since 2002, keto since 2005. So I just kind of have things dialed in and, and kind of know intuitively. If you track and you find benefit with that, great. That's totally fine. This is just my personal approach from doing it for quite a few years. Now, how do you get a continuous glucose monitor and how do you put it on? Uh, in, in, short, in a short second, I'll have Deanna put it on my, I like to put it on the back of the tricep, but what I find is that if you exercise or you go in the sauna, two lifestyle modalities or strategies that are very, very helpful, um, it doesn't last as long. The adhesive on the, the sensor should last 10 days theoretically, but for me, it never made it past eight. That's just me, because it, it was summer, it was hot, jumping in the water, uh, going in the sauna, exercising. Those are all things that lend itself to falling off. So how do you get one of these things? Well, first things first, I would suggest becoming friends with your doctor and just say, hey doc, I'll, I'm willing to pay cash for this. Just write me a script for the Abbott Freestyle Libre, and then there's a new, I think it's called Dexcom. I don't know who makes that. Um, and I'm sure there's other devices. I think there's this German product that uses infrared technology. Anyhow, uh, so become friends with your doctor. Uh, the first time I did this, I, I took my friend Tab Furchaw's advice. I just went on eBay, ordered one. It came from the, ne the Netherlands. And that's where I learned a big mistake that I want to share with you and help you avoid. You know, that device was, was, was in Dutch and so forth where I could put it in French. So it had three languages. It was, I think, the European model. Um, so I had three sensors and the reader. I got it for $180. And then when I went to reorder the sensors, I got a new Abbott Freestyle Libre Pro. Uh, this, it has a totally different reader, and I realized that the Pro sensors are incompatible with just a general Abbott Freestyle Libre reader. So I ordered the sensors, but I didn't reorder the reader because I already had a reader. So that created a big cluster. So I reached out to my friend, Dr. John Lemansky. He helped me out and get a reader. Uh, or actually, no, sorry, he got me the sensors, but the, the, the American sensors for the the general sensors didn't work with the pro reader. So I was like, oh my gosh. So, so then I had to get my buddy, Dr. Jeff Lakoven. He wrote me a script for the new Abbott Freestyle Libre. So um, that's what I would suggest. Becoming friends with your doctor or just go to your doctor and say, hey, look, you know, I've been doing this keto diet for a while. I've been doing whatever diet. I just want to make sure that I'm fine tuning my lifestyle, my stress, you know, reduction therapies, my sleep, my exercise and everything. And they can write you a script for this. So I did end up paying cash for three sensors and one reader. And that was all in, it was 160 bucks, okay? Now that's, that's a one time, it's kind of expensive, right? If you think about it, it's, you're not gonna spend that every single month. You're gonna do this once a quarter, once every six months, once a year, just to check in, to tune in, just to make sure that everything is good and that the macronutrients, the food you're eating, the exercise, the sleep, that all that is, in, is on track, right? So again, yeah, if you're gonna order on eBay, get everything all in, all, get the kit, you know, get the sensors and the reader all together. Otherwise you're going to end up like me with like mismatching readers and they're not going to be compatible and you're going to stick the sensor on your arm and you're going to be pissed that you did that. Uh Oh, <laughs> so hope you, hopefully you'll avoid those lessons and those mistakes that I made. And here I'm going to show you cut to some footage where Deanne actually puts it in the sensor of my arm. It's very easy to do. So for placement, right where you have the most muscle, uh, I did it kind of right here, all right? Deanna's gonna put it on me, so 
Deanna, um, let's see. So let's put it uh, about right there. Right here? Okay. So, yeah. so the key, guys, is when you do it, you need to go very fast. Okay, so what Deanna's gonna do, she's gonna get in position and just press down, okay? Because this thing is spring-loaded. I don't know if you can see this. It's a very, very fine needle, okay? Okay, okay. go for it. One, two, three. Okay, pull it off. There might be a little adhesive. Boom, and it's on like that. Okay, so I'd be lying to you if I told you it didn't hurt. It does hurt a little bit, not at first, it's afterwards because there's this little micro sensor in your arm. So that's it. So like, to be honest, moving around feels a little bit weird the first five or six hours. It's not painful, but uh, I actually trained shoulders and triceps earlier today. I wouldn't want to go to the gym right now and train triceps, so it might feel a little weird, but it gets better with time. Again, this is only in French, Dutch, and I can't remember the other language, but you just hold it by the by the deal. All right. So, um, uh oh. Yeah, hey there, Rosemary. Um, I have the Abbott Freestyle Libre Pro, and my my sensor broke. I'm traveling. I'm wondering if you guys have any of those sensors for uh, for purchase. Those are considered uh, prescription only. If you have a prescription, um, we can potentially fill it for you. But let me see if we have it in stock. Okay. Yeah, no, we only have the, we don't have for the pro, sorry. Mm. Do you know who might have the pro? Not offhand. Um, I mean, I, I did go to their website and they listed you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me see if I, I could potentially see who has it. Freestyle Libre Sensor. That's here because it's in my system. It doesn't show me pros, it shows me Libre. Hmm. I can look up to see other stores, but only, but it's not allowed me to search for a Libre Pro, only just the Libre. Mm, okay. Yeah. So it may not be in your inventory yet. Um, it's not even in our system. Mm -hmm. I'm just typing in freestyle, not even like Libre, just freestyle. And um, the list of drugs it pulls up uh, just excludes the Pro. So hmm. Where have you gotten it before? Uh, it was actually at a Rite Aid. Yeah, so I, I just, I'll give them a call uh, and see maybe, so. Okay, that works. I appreciate your help. Okay, bye. That's it for this video, friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button if you did. You can always subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when we create new videos and content like this. And coming up soon, I'm gonna share with you the results of how a vegan vegetarian popular restaurant in Seattle eating there, how that affected my blood glucose in the hours after the meal. I think you'll find it interesting. So we'll catch you on the next video.